guys, welcome back to my channel, it's me Shina. The Chichilla Dental Disease with Scientific Facts video has to postpone to next episode because Bendik have shown signs of the dental genetic disease last month. This video will be the last time you guys see Bendik on my channel. I would like to use the opportunity to share some tips on how we can discover if our baby have teeth problem. Also, a big thanks for Bendix showing us many important care tips teaching us how to care for his chichilus fellows. The chichilus dental disease is a very complex disease that most pest owners has no clues about. Often think this disease has no correct answer. The worst case is to get fooled by dishonest breeders or backyard breeders that tell you is this a chain thing that can get rid of or is this a typical for all rodents with tea problems. Told you this disease is just like a dog kids problems or cat's kidneys problems. Those explanations are lousy excuses that just show those people have absolutely lack knowledge about this disease. Or simply, they often have genetic chichitis in their herd that try to cover up the truth that they are breeding sick animals. Because of this complexities of this dental disease, I will split up a few parts about chichitis teeth problem education videos. Today, these videos will mainly focus on how I discover my baby's dental issue and why it's essential to do teeth checkups for our verbals what daily routine we should pay attention to, and why it is essential to observations of a baby's diet style. Bandic is not the first genetic dental disease chichilla I got. In 2019, I got my first pair of breeding female chichillas named Ding and Dong. Shortly after 6 months to 8 months, Ding and Dong both birthed to 5 killed little babies. After that, the nightmare began. That was the first time I discovered this horrible disease. When I found out Ding was way dull and not eating her head as much as before, I brought her to the vet to check up and found out she had a tooth problem after an x-ray. At that time, Ding was already far beyond an advanced stage and hardly could eat because she didn't get enough fiber and caused diarrhea. She was tremendously in pain at the very end before I booked the time to put her to sleep. Ding showed more affections and cuddling behavior. Signs are telling me she was in pain but I have not noticed until too late. After that, Dawn has the same problem. So Ding has to put to sleep when she did not even reach 2 years old. And Dawn and her baby were given back to the breeder. She was offered me a replacement. After that, I talked to other breeders and then got a bunch of different reasons like diets, injuries, breed too much, this and that. But mostly avoid the genetic part of the issues until I showed Ding and Don's prep degree to an honest breeder and recognized that the line repeatedly having genetic disease. At that time, I was still telling myself maybe just an accident that the breeder did not know or lack of time to keep tracking her line. But unfortunately, that's not the case. I'm also not so satisfied with all the answers I got from many breeders of vest. An uncertain answer could be diet or genetic. Plus, most of the breeders are trying to avoid talking about this subject. It's just like a taboo or AIDS. Instead of openly sharing knowledge and getting proper education about this vital disease for our little friends, everyone keeps their secrets, which is kind of ridiculous in my opinion. And because of that, I start my little project to learn and investigate it. But the progress is slow and laborious because many people are unwilling to share these issues. Very few are honest and willing to talk about it. I will talk about it in the latest videos of the Selecting Breeding episodes. Let's get into how to detect teeth problems for our baby. First, I want to give peace info here because you will often see this name and reference in my videos about Chichita's teeth problems. This is Dr. David Crosley, a British European veterinary specialized in small animals dentistry. Dr. Crosley has done an extensive survey about Chichita Dental's problem since 1997 and published his thesis in 2003 called Chichita Dental Disease. 
and thank you for new channels. With her help, I could purchase Dr. Crossley the original study to learn about Chichilla dental disease properly. Some science studies or other vet articles you can find on the internet are free, such as dental pathologies in Chichilla's. I will put up links below. According to Dr. Crossley's study, most of the Chichita breeders define four model cushion signs like this. Many people consider it only feeling the jawline has bumps or foot declines are in advanced stage. However, Dr. Crossley in his study says, Commonly Chichita's in these so clinical signs only in an advanced stage of dental disease. The definitions of a clinical science means when the cheese shows signs of selecting food behavior, slowly finish up their chew toys. These are the signs that tell us that teeth are screwed up, difficult to choose. Despite the fact that many inexperienced pet owners do not feel a bum, or some experienced breeder do not recognize the num, they argue that this is not a lum. But these are the symptoms that are signs already in an event stage. It is crucial that you notice these selecting foods changing and not get fooled by uneducated breeder or dishonest breeder. After Ding and Don, I got another three chichurus with an inherited teeth problem, which is Emily, Phoenix, Bandix. Emily and Phoenix were Ebony RPAC. It is Angola's baby, and Bandic is a black velvet. All together cost me around 880 euro. I try to be extremely careful and find the breeders recommend by few reputed breeders. Still, shortly after a few months, I took them home and I got another breeder who told me that all of their parents were found a dental problem and confirmed it was an inherited issue. The sad truth is that the breeders who showed me were trying to hide from me. It means that when they were still baby from 4 to 11 months old, I must accept the cruel fact that they need to be euthanized and like they didn't have the chance to spend a long life with me. And if you guys have followed my videos, you should know that Phoenix died 2 months ago and now it's Bandix turn. Emily right now hasn't shown any symptoms but likely she won't have a long life as her parents found Marlo also at an early age. Since all the Marlo's baby I got, I know how important it is to pay attention to their diet and weekly teeth checkup. To detect Chichitos have a dental problem, there are a few things we should look after. Number 1. Diet Style Every Chichitos has a different diet style. Take Phoenix Bandix for example. Before Phoenix shows signs of teeth problem, it's a very good boy. He ate 90% hay and 10% pellets, one raw sip, one apple sip per day. He doesn't mess around the hay a whole lot. Like every day, I can see his hay bar have a very little hay left. He ate most of stems, sea hat, and leaves. After tea have a problem, select only soft leaves to eat and leave many stems. He also doesn't want to eat rosehip anymore because it was hard and painful for him to chew. Bandit is a challenge to detect with only hay because he messes with the hay a lot and doesn't like stems, often leave many stems. So before and after the observations with hay, it's hard to tell the difference. However, I notice he ate more pellets than before. Let's say before he ate 70% of hay, then now he ate 60% of the hay and 30% of pellet because pellets take less time to chew than hay. Also, he now only eats a smaller rosehip but would not eat the big rosehip. So, by observing your baby's diet style, you will realize pretty quickly if their teeth are having trouble chewing hay or rose hay. Number 2. Detect with chew toys. Before the teeth problem, Phoenix will chew up his toys within a couple of days or less than a week, depending what chew toys, such as primate stone, loofer, finger strips, willow balls, and apple stick, etc. But after the show's tea problem, all those toys are barely chewed up. 
but most noticeable is the apple stick and primary stone. When he was healthy, he would finish his stone within a week. But after he shows teeth are discomforted you, even three weeks the stone still not finished. And apple stick are even more appearing. From choosing thinner one to chew to not chewing at all. The changing of a chewing up the apple stick can tell you how bad his conditions of the teeth is. You can see here that Bandit usually took two weeks to finish up a stone. And now here you can see three weeks now and still unfinished and has much love. And here different stage of the apple stick. In the first week of his monocusions, he chews thinner one and doesn't want to chew thick one. After the second week, he only chew half of it or choose an even thinner one. Until today, as we speak, he already four weeks after when I first discovered his marrow disease, he barely can finish up the apple stick. Only the very, very, very thin one. Apple stick are excellent tools for detecting teeth problems for our furballs because a healthy chichitters will not leave their apple stick unfinished. I highly recommend that all cheese parents keep this daily routine for our furball. Number three, detect with the front teeth checkup. This part is the most difficult for new cheese parents, even some breeders who bred chichitters for a long time are often can't detect lumps by feeling the jawline. It depends on each individual how serious they learn and whether they are taught by professional breeders or rangers. So suppose you are not confident in feeling the jawline. In that case, you should focusing on the front teeth because once you find out the front teeth are crooked, they have a dental problem as they can't chew properly. And what should we look for? The front teeth? Here's is how free front teeth should be. Oranges in colors, not white or yellow. And the bottom should be straight, not crooked or uneven. On the side view, should look for a short, sharp line, not like long bend or curve in angles. Number four, detect with the jaw lines checkup. This is filling the jaw lines. Look at the scales photo, where is the molars? You can see number one, two, three, four molars. Take Bendix for example. This video was taken a few weeks ago when I felt he had a small lump and it was in the P4 position and it called permolar. During that time, I only felt the two lump on the side face jawline and did not feel much on the bottom jawline as I wasn't experienced enough to feel the difference. However, for those who have been feeling more than a hundred to thousand marrow chains, they can detect even before the lump shows by feeling the jawline growing wider and more straight. After four weeks, I can now feel he have a noticeable bump on M2 and a small lump on M3. The whole jawline was more outgrowing outside, wider than before, as I feel it more often can tell the difference. Also, the bottoms of a healthy chichilla bottom jawline should look like these, have a curve still. If they have a model, it will eventually be growing down, push it down, and you might feel a straight line instead of a big curve in the middle. So inexperienced parents must get used to feeling the jawline regularly. The more you feel it, the more your finger get a bit of muscle memory of how it's supposed to be, the quicker you notice the difference. If you are uncertain with the jawline but notice the front teeth are growing wrong, you should either bring it to check with an exalted vet or find a very skillful breeder who is confident to fill the jaw lines for you. In my case, where I live, no vet has seen a chichirus before. Then I am asking for an exotic vest to check for ding. I was a bit lucky, although he has no experience with chichirus, he has some rabbits himself, so at least he know how to look at the x-rays. 
but we should know by now they are different species. The two crops are pretty different. Dr. Crossley's study has a detailed explanation with all. So after that, I asked her to help me. She taught me how to look at the teeth in its photos, but the feeling parts I have to learn myself compared with the scouts photos, as we are not living in the same country. So if you have a very skillful breeder near you, you should ask for help with feeling the jawline, because not all the vets have a good experience with cheat cheaters and know how to check with an x-ray. As Liu took her chins in 2011, the exalted vet has also never seen a chins before. This x-ray clearly shows that the tooth root is very wrong compared to a healthy chins x-rays here. And this exalted vet told Liu that her animal has no problem, healthy animal could maybe get some deworming. That's why we must be careful when we choose an exotic vet. Otherwise, you could lose 200 euros for an x-ray and your baby may even suffer longer time. Most of the cheese don't let you open their mouth to do front teeth checkups or let you feel their jaw lines. It takes practice. Firstly, you have to relax and stay calm. If you are nervous, your baby can feel it and will get more struggle. I open humming a song, it's a song I often do during the playtime. So they sort of associate a fun time. Let them know it's nothing to be worried about. Pat their head a bit and one hand press down their ears a bit and the other hand open the mouth and push ups until you can see the front wheel and the side wheel. In the beginning, you should just do it for a couple seconds, not too long. As they're not used to it, just a few seconds, give them tricks, repeat, and then just play a little bit and cuddle after. The whole process should let them feel just normal, like a play moment. Gradually increase the time by every week for one or two seconds. After one or two months, you should be able to check and take a good photos for the record. So. All these signs you can detect before they starting losing weight. When they starting to lose weight, it is actually getting nasty. They can't eat anymore. It has to be extremely painful for them to show food decline. When they show early signs or symptoms and confirm with model, we should help by go and put them to sleep. I have heard some people say that chichilla don't feel the same pain as human because they have a high pain threshold. It's completely retarded to think that. I can tell you they feel as much as like we do. You can look at the videos here, like Bendy. If he doesn't feel the pain, he won't open his mouth when I feel the lump at that time. And if it doesn't hurt, he won't be unable to chew his favorite apple stick. Chichilla feel the same pain as we do. Just because they always look cute, plus their pride nature to high pain, doesn't mean that they don't feel pain. Here's the photos from Dr. Crossley's study. In the photos, what you're looking at is an overgrowth teeth root pushing up to its knee so press the necromal. That's why phoenix have teeth over and over. Below this chichilla one year old so has no watery eyes and drooling. Still, you can clearly see this premolar is already up at the nasals. The side face jaw lines has a lump and the bottom jaw line is strict with no more curve, which is very similar to Bandit a few weeks ago. And this one is an enormous effect on the disease. Same animal with the old x-rays you saw earlier. Watery eyes and drooling. In these photos, you can clearly see P4 and M1 already up to the nasal. M2 and M3 are already up into the eye socket. The tooth is growing more outside way and too long. It can't close the mouth properly and extremely pain cause drooling. Many bumps on the bottom side jawline and bottom jawline. Can you imagine if you have an ingrown nail and constantly poking into your flesh? Every time you move your toes, it is hurt so much that you can't be able to walk. 
There is no amount of painkillers or drugs that can release the pain all day and night. So we should let go of our animal when we detect early stage. Don't wait until your chins get this far, like these photos here. It is cruel and inhumane. And if you take it to the animal hospital for an x-ray, make sure you get an exotic vet who knows how to check Chichula's dental x-ray. And not like these ones here. It's gone so wrong, but hey, no problem. Healthy Chichula's, just get some deworming. As a chi mom, it's killing me to know my baby suffer awful pain but still act like usual just because of their cute look and nature. At the same time, I can't do anything about it. You can see in these videos, it was just a couple days ago. It weighs the same, it regular, groom normal, and it's still pliable. It is hard to find out that Chichula has a dental problem and could be in advanced stage, if not weekly checkup. Bendy has already scheduled tomorrow go to Chichula Heaven Joint Phoenix. It is painful to let go of him, especially when you expect your baby to spend his life for eight, at least 8 to 10 years with you, but has to die with a disease that can be avoided. But I know there will be no regrets because I'm not the one who brought sick animals, and I have done the best I can in his short life. We have a great time together. I'm thankful for him came to my life to teach me many things that I haven't learned before. Perhaps we will miss again in his next life. It bothers me that until today, there are still many people using them as money tools. It neglects this severe dental disease that knowing is inherited but unwilling to call them on. I hope these videos can help the Chin's parents to get to know this horrible disease and learn how to do weekly checkups with their babies. In the next episode, we will learn some scientific facts about many causes of the dental's problems, malocclusion's disease. And that's all for the day. See you guys next time. Not for bending. Bye.